A question we get asked often is, where do we find inspiration for our patterns and our yarn? It might be memories of our childhood. It could be a beautiful rose. It might be vintage movies or even falling rain. Sometimes it's animals or it could even be the shifting of the season. Many times I've even walked past things that may not seem beautiful, but I saw the potential for a yarn color or a knit pattern or a crochet pattern. One time Tim and I were actually walking behind our work, taking our boxes to the dumpster, and there were these glass panels, like partitions that were shattered on the ground, just like several of them, and the sun was glinting on them. I said, Tim, grab your camera and take a picture, because I thought it was so beautiful. It had these blues and gray tones and browns, and so of course we had to turn that into a yarn colorway for you. Inspiration is everywhere. For this new pattern, the designer Ann Robinson was actually cooking in her kitchen and she saw a radicchio sitting on her black soapstone countertop and it had off-white tones and vivid fuchsia and she thought it was so gorgeous on the soapstone counter so she decided to design this shawl for you. So this pattern is called radicchio and it features simple yet stunning fair isle with a classic garter stitch border. It is so stunning and so wearable. This pattern is so amazing because it's super easy to adjust the size. If you want to make it thinner, more like a scarf shape, you can do that. Or if you want to make a wider shawl or even a blanket, you can totally do that as well. I think it would be gorgeous as any of those things. It is so cozy and so comfortable. The colors are so elegant and heartwarming and the Mirage Sport yarn we used is so soft and buttery. The Mirage Sport yarn is one of our dreamiest, most luxurious yarns. It's got camel and silk and wool and cashmere in it. It is soft and dreamy. If you would love to download the pattern, you can grab it at expressionfiberarts.com. We're also going to put the direct links to it and the yarn in the description box for you. While you're on the site, check out our other beautiful Fair Isle patterns. I brought a couple of examples to show you. We have this gorgeous Fair Isle shawl, which is called Etude Number no. 4, and it's actually a part of a whole series of Etude shawls where you learn a bunch of different techniques as you make each one. And then we have this beautiful fairy footprints baby blanket, which is so super cute. I wanted to show you today a few rows of this Fair Isle chart for this shawl, just to show you how easy it is to work. So I've worked rows one through three, and I've got my nine border stitches on each side, and then I have one repeat here in the middle but you of course will have a lot more repeats so let's go ahead and start on row four row four is a wrong side row and you're gonna start by working nine stitches in color three which for me is gray so we're doing garter stitch borders so we just knit all the border stitches whenever you come to them And I've got little stitch markers just to help me know where my borders are. So now we're going to break color three. So all you need to do is grab your little scissors and go ahead and give that color a cut. And you're done with that one. Now you're going to work row four of the chart. So jump to your chart and you're on a wrong side row. So you're going to purl all the stitches. Let me go ahead and slip my stitch marker. And I'm attaching the correct color, so look at the color you should be using. And for me, this is my white color, and I'm just going to purl across every stitch, because that is what row four says to do. So you're reading it from left to right, and then when you're on right side rows, you're going to read them from right to left. So there's that, and when you reach your border, I'm going to go ahead and slip my stitch marker, and then I'm going to work the nine stitch garter stitch border still in color one, which for me is white. And garter stitch is just knitting every stitch, every row, when you're working flat. Nice and easy. So there's row four. Now we're on row five. So we're gonna go ahead and start with nine stitches in our color one, which for me is white. And we're gonna knit those stitches. I'm gonna slip my stitch marker. Now you're gonna knit row five of the chart. So jump to row five and you're gonna read it from right to left. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit that first stitch, which for me is gonna be my purple color. And then knit three in the white. Knit, knit, knit. Now I have another purple. Let me get my tail out of the way and grab my actual yarn strand and I'm going to knit that stitch and keep your floats loose on the back. I like to keep my stitches sort of spread out on the needle. You don't want your floats getting too tight 
and then I'm going to knit the next stitch. So you'll repeat that all the way across your shawl and when you do get to the end <clears throat> and you come to your border stitches you're just going to work those in color one which is white for me. And there's row five. For row six we're going to go ahead and work our nine stitch garter stitch border in our color one. Slip your stitch marker if you're using one. I do think it helps. Now we're going to purl row six of the chart. So jump over to your chart and you're going to read from left to right and you're going to purl all these stitches since we're on the wrong side. So I'm going to start with two of my white. Then I'm going to grab the purple yarn and I'm going to purl the next stitch in the purple. Again, keep your stitches spread apart so your floats are nice and loose here on the back. Now a white and a purple. White and continue repeating that across your row. Now I'm going to go ahead and break color two, which for me is purple. So just grab your scissors and give that a cut. We're done with that color for now. Now we're going to work our garter stitch border in color four. So let me slip my stitch marker. Grab your fourth color. For me, it's this beautiful fuchsia. And we're going to work our garter stitch border. And we're all set up for row seven. For row seven, we're on the right side again. We're going to knit nine stitches in color four. Go ahead and slip your little stitch marker if you're using one. Now you're going to jump over to row seven of the chart and we're going to read that from right to left and we're going to work knit stitches since we're on the right side of our work. So go ahead and work two stitches for me in white, one stitch in color four, which for me is the fuchsia. two in the white, one in the fuchsia, and repeat that all the way across your row. When you do get to the end, you're going to work your remaining nine stitches as knit stitches, since we're doing a garter stitch border, and you're going to use color four, which for me is this fuchsia color. And there's row seven. For row eight, we're going to start with our garter stitch border with color four, so we're going to knit those first nine stitches. Now we're going to go ahead and jump to the chart for row eight. So I'm going to go ahead and break this color. So that just means to cut it. And you want to leave a little bit longer tails than this. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to weave in your ends when you do go to do that. All right, so row eight, we're on the wrong side. So we're going to actually purl all of these stitches. So I'm going to start with two stitches of my white color. One, two. I'm going to attach my purple. Super easy when you attach your yarns. You just plop them on. Go ahead and purl that stitch. Purl a white. Grab your purple. Purl that stitch. Purl your white and repeat that across your row. Now you're back into your border stitches. So for row eight, we're just going to Knit all of those stitches with our color two, whatever that may be for you. And you're done with row eight. Now we're on to row nine, which is a right side row. So we're gonna go ahead and start by working our garter stitch border in our color two. Now you're gonna knit row nine of the chart. So jump over to the chart and we're gonna read it from right to left and we're gonna knit these stitches since we are on the right side. One, two, three, I've got another purple, and then a white, and just continue repeating that all the way across your row. When you get to the end of that row, we're gonna go ahead and knit those final nine stitches in our color two. Eight and nine, and there's row nine for you. To start row 10, you're gonna work your garter stitch border in color two. All right, once you've worked your garter stitch border in color two, you're gonna go ahead and cut, cut that color. We're done with that one. Now we're going to purl row 10 of the chart. 
So let me slip my little stitch marker, jump over to the chart, and you're gonna read the chart from left to right, and we're gonna purl all the way across. So for me, that's my white color. So just repeat that until you get to your, your other border on the other side of your shawl. Slip your stitch marker, and then we're gonna work our garter stitch border in that same color one. This is what we've got so far. And you can see on the back, we've got all these beautiful little tails coming out. You just wanna grab a darning needle and weave in your ends. So you wanna weave each color into each color. So the white into the white, the pink into the pink, etc. And I also love how these borders look slightly different. They're intentionally not symmetrical and I think that's super fun. And we do have some more videos on how to knit Fair Isle both flat and in the round. So go ahead and check the description box for the links to those. Also, I would love to hear from you today and what inspires you in your knitting and crochet. How do you choose your pattern? What yarn colors do you love? What really makes your heart go pitter pat? Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. Here's a big giant hug. I hope you have a marvelous day and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.